first we're going to start by cleaning all the stuff off the loft here guys and you know how it goes if you've got a place to set something eventually you're going to have to move it Yeah, I've been looking for this stuff. Oh yeah, you always need one of these and I don't even know what this is. You can't play this stuff sitting on a loft. I always keep a suitcase handy just in case Chilio decides today's the day. You never know. <laughs> easy this stuff is to clean and Granny Jill showed me a great trick uh, this is bleach water in your average yard sprayer pump this guy up and I do mix my bleach pretty strong to the water solution we're going to spray this wall down and then just simply wipe it off uh, again you're looking at 20 years of use here this stuff has been up and some of the discoloration is the pictures that I just have taken down so you can see the faded areas I'm going to show you how this bleach cleans this stuff up. Now, obviously we're not going to spray around any kind of electrical outlet or anything like that. But again, this is one of the greatest ideas that she's ever shown me, is being able to use a yard sprayer for industrial cleaning. I put this on a fine mist we're simply going to spray it on there. Again, we'll stay away from the electrical outlets. And then we're just going to wipe it off. Now I do let this sit on there for a few minutes before I wipe it off. But you can already see the color running down. So, what a great way to clean this stuff. And again, completely durable. I mean, simply insulation in behind it. So when I start wiping this down with a rag, I mean, I can do anything I want to do here. This is this is not plastic. I uh, I don't know really how to explain it, but it's extremely durable. It, it's heavier duty than a tarp. That stuff will. It'll hold 500 pounds if you can get it strapped down and actually, uh, you know, be able to reinforce it to where it can uh, hold it in there. You'd probably use it for a swimming pool liner, I'm not sure. Let's see how it cleans up. All right, now I'm simply going to wipe this down with a sponge. Uh, I do have fresh water in my bucket here. Saturate the sponge. Like I said, you can just see this stuff absolutely cleaning up. And there you have it. I mean, it's just that simple. Uh, I'm going to wipe, finish wiping this wall down, and it'll be 100% clean, and it'll look new again. What I'm going to do is take this piece down. Uh, this is right here by our door, and it does catch a lot of wind blowing in here. And I've never liked the way I cut around this plug in. So, I'm going to replace this piece with a new sheet. But we are going to cut this down and put it up in the loft. 
where we uh, just did all the cleanup up there. Now that's another thing that makes this so nice, again in a building this size, uh, depending on what you're using it for, is uh, if I do have to remove a piece, I just simply remove the staples. I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver and a needle nose pair, pair of pliers and just simply pull these staples out. And then that way, like I said, uh, I can go right back on with my new piece. And Set that back here for a second. Alrighty. There's the insulated wall. Okay. That's what the back side of that stuff looks like after. A lot of years. I'm going to show you an easy way to cut that. Now, again, because it is lightweight material, if you have a flat surface that you can roll it out, it's 10 feet wide. So whatever you need to do to make it easy, I'm not going to set up anything because we're only doing these two small pieces up there. So if you're running a long wall like this, you really don't even need it. You can just simply staple the top, the bottom, keep everything square, and roll it out. But we're going to measure us out an 18 inch piece here and cut this thing off. So I've got an extra two and a half feet laying up on top. I'm going to use this as my square edge uh, on top and side and pull this guy in. Let's get us an 18 inch mark here. That's going to be right there. Double check. Yep, looks good. <laughs> now you can mark it, or you can just go ahead and cut it. And then I will just simply finish cutting off the top of it up there with the uh, square here and then that way I and mean, I already got it cut the length so I'm ready to install it. Alright? There we go. One piece ready to be installed. I'm going to mark this where this is setting. And then I have to remove these two staples. I want this new material we're going to put up to underlap underneath this. Go right up to that pencil mark I've made. I'm going to keep this stuff pretty square. And simply put our other piece right back over it. Alright, I got my mark now. And there we go. I've been waiting for 20 years to put that up. I guess today was the day. Alright guys. We've got the top of it done. Right across through here. That looks a lot better finished. Glad to have that done. Okay, let's go on to the wall. Alright, so if you guys haven't framed your walls up yet, um, go back and look at, I made a video called Insulation Tips Before You Concrete Your Building. But, this stuff right here is a band board insulation, and it's made to lay underneath your band board 
before you stand it up and that makes that air tight so wind can't blow underneath it but also what this acts as as an expansion joint for around your poles if you pour concrete straight up to the wood here you're going to run the risk of your concrete floor splitting on you because this thing is setting down in the ground so it's constantly drawing moisture and expanding and again I explained that in the uh, how to install this stuff so if you haven't seen it that's a uh, insulation tips before you concrete your metal building or pole barn and also I done another video on how to run your insulation in before you frame it up and unfortunately I had everything finished so I get to show you now All right what we're looking at here is simply framed up again bottom plate there's a top plate up there that my studs are nailed to I did run these on two foot centers because again it's it's more of a commercial building than it would be a residential so two foot is fine for me uh, this is six and a quarter insulation so this this building heats exceptionally well it's just really easy to heat okay uh, make sure you seal up everything that you can I got a couple of things here I'm going to fix before we put our new uh, wall covering up like I said staple everything and then you can move on to your next stage there okay so <clears throat> if you're at this stage like I said this stuff is important uh, this will save you a lot of money and this insulation is the thing you never see in your home or, or building but is one of the things that saves you the most money uh, this is one one of a handful of things you can do to a home or a building and get your money back okay so it's important even though you don't get to see it all the time let's move on with it all right what I have here this is an aluminum foil tape and it's used in heating and cooling for wrapping ductwork and things like that once they want to make something air proof However, this is an extremely durable tape, and it's easy to work with. You can cut it with scissors. Once you get it stuck, it's not going to come off. So I have a couple of joints here that my insulation bats didn't reach. I'm going to tape these up, as well as around my light plug here. That way, once I put my finish back on here, I don't have any air trying to seep into the building. Okay? I will get that done, and we'll come right back. All right, let's take us a closer look at this stuff. Now, this is not plastic. This is actually a home wrap. It's a it's a moisture barrier. However, I, I don't know how they made this stuff, but it it's a thousand times more durable than plastic is. It's actually um, you have to really work to puncture it. Now, I will say once you start to cut it, it's extremely easy to cut. But again, stronger than plastic. Um, <clears throat> It is now I said in the beginning that these come in 10 foot rolls in reality it's actually nine feet however as of today if you was to finish this building on the inside with this material it's a uh, nine feet by 150 feet and it's $160 a roll so you could do every wall in this barn just like you see here all the way around and you could do the ceiling like you see there for four hundred dollars so that means you can cover your entire interior of your building for four hundred dollars and should you choose you have to put a moisture barrier up after you insulate anyway so should you choose you can cover right back over the stuff with sheetrock or whatever your your finish is going to be okay uh, and I am in no way affiliated with these guys I'm simply passing the information along to you because again this building has been covered with this on the interior for 20 years now and it has worked exceptionally well so I just think it's a good idea that maybe somebody out there can use all right and definitely an expensive way to cover the interior of your building. We're going to start in this corner here. We do have an outlet we're going to be concerned with, but we're just going to cover right over that, and then we will cut that in with scissors here in just a minute. We're going to keep everything square to our corner, and then move this direction.
Okay, now I'm going to give me a starting staple in here just to hold it where I need it. Now, we've got it squared up, then you simply unroll it. Like I said, now this stuff's durable. Test that upper corner so we know we're running square. stuff up and not have to fight it too much. Okay, let me give you a good view of that. Like I said, I've run out just a little bit farther than I need to go so I can lean that up to the top. And I want to just keep everything running square and I'm going to start at the bottom and run across and then that way I can work my way right to the top of it. Okay, just that simple. Let's get our bottom stapled up and we'll move forward. Now, I'm going to move you up so you can see the top side of it. What we're going to do is start stretching that top up tight, because now we know we have a square corner. And I'm just simply using a box cutter to get started here. And we will start at the floor again and work our way right up to the top. Now at this point, just feel back here and find your edge and actually fold that stuff up to make you a line. And we may have to trim it twice so we can tighten everything up. But there's a line starting to develop right along where I want to cut that out at. And again, just a simple box cutter, utility knife, whichever you have. This ladder, and like I said, I can take. I got a plug in, I got to cut around, and I can take some of that ripple out of there. So we have plenty of room for adjustment here. 
and then we would just simply staple it off and I staple it about every 18 to 24 inches okay let's tighten it up and get it done and we have our wall plug right here and you can actually feel that pretty uh, good behind there now be extremely careful don't don't be sticking anything metal inside there because you don't want to get electrocuted and then what I'm going to do is determine the edges of it actually I'm going to get me a staple in right here that way I can really stretch that good and tight Two of them in there for us. And I'm going to take my fingernail and just simply draw the outline of that box where I want to cut it at. Okay. Like I said, now you got to be careful here. And I'm going to cut it small and then just fold the sides in. Now, truly you're better off if you go ahead and shut the power off. That way you don't have to worry about this box. That's going to work out perfect. Like I said, we cut it a little bit small, and we can actually fold that in in our cover now when it covers over that. Now I'm going to tuck that down in behind our ears of our uh, plug-in. Get that guy out. There we have it. Okay. Like I said, that simply covered right around that box. Now we're going to finish stapling everything down. And that project's complete. Alright guys, we've got the door, or the uh, outlet trimmed out. And now we're going to trim the edge off of this door. Make this look a little nicer. Make sure you have yourself a good pair of scissors. Cut this stuff just about like wrapping paper. Once you get started in there. Okay, I'm going to grab my ladder. Perfect. You can trim it if you chose to. Alright guys, here we have it. Finished wall. Like I said. And for an industrial building, again, if you have metal studs, or, or just simply the girding running down, down through it, uh, even in your rafters, just get you an eighth inch or a quarter inch furring board, fasten it to your metal, and then you can staple the stuff right to it. I mean, you can cover an interior of the building and brighten it up a thousand percent for around five hundred dollars for a thirty by fifty building, uh, building of your size, whatever you need, right? So inexpensive, easy to do, and if I need to, I can take this stuff right back off and replace it again. So 
and again, you can wash it. Uh, you can even probably use a latex paint to paint that. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I bet you could. And it looks awesome. Works really good for sound deadening. If you were spending a lot of time in a building like this, uh, working on um, anything that has air compressors or if you're hammering metal or whatever, your ears will thank you at the end of the day because if this is a hard surface like that plywood there, uh, the echo in a building like this because there's no walls breaking up the sound, I mean, it, it really can't, it's a lot. So I hope this has been fun for you and I really do think it'll help you and I hope it does. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.